Up until this point, we've been working with the default profile. If you look in the bottom right hand corner of the status bar in Wireshark, that will tell you what profile you're working in. If you left mouse click, you'll see what profiles are available. I only have the default profile. You can also choose to create a new profile. If you right mouse click, you'll see some additional options for switching between profiles and creating new profiles and managing your profiles. But we're going to import an existing profile. I created a profile when I was writing the troubleshooting with Wireshark book. I created this profile that focused on all the things I look for when I'm troubleshooting networks. We did some of these things in these videos on this LoRa's lab kit, such as looking for delays and DNS responses or HTTP responses or TCP packets inside of a stream and looking for specific errors. The name of the file that has the troubleshooting profile is called troubleshooting underscore book underscore profile dot zip. And all we need to do is take this entire zip file and copy it into our Wireshark profiles directory. If you haven't created any custom profiles yet for Wireshark, you won't have a profiles directory in place. You can either create it manually or if you'd like Wireshark to create it for you, simply right mouse click down here on the profiles area. Oop, let me right mouse click. There we go and select new. And Wireshark will bring up the create new profile window. We could say we want to create a profile from, let's say the classic Wireshark profile that will have the very vibrant colors like we used to see before Wireshark 1.10. And we can give it a profile name. So this is my sample profile. And I'll say OK. Once you create the new profile, Wireshark will create a profiles directory for you. And we can see that we don't have our filter expression buttons and we don't have the different columns we created because all of those were saved over in our default profile that we've been working in. In addition, we can see that the IP header indicates that there's a problem. And if we expand this out a little further, we'll see header checksum is the issue because we still have checksum validation enabled in this new profile. But let's go ahead and import the profile that I created from the book. First, you need to find out where your profiles are being held. And the way to do that is to select Help, About Wireshark, and then select the Folders tab. Your profiles are saved in the Personal Configuration folder. So double click that hyperlink. And there we can see a Profiles directory. Again, if you didn't create a custom profile in your version of Wireshark, you won't have this directory, but you can simply create it at this point. That's fine. You can just select new folder and make it. Just make sure it's called profiles and it's all lowercase. I'm going to go into the profiles directory and you'll notice that there's a directory called sample profile. So this is the location where I want to copy my zip file that contains the troubleshooting with Wireshark book profile. And here's the file. So I'm going to copy that and then paste it over into this directory. I'll right mouse click on the zip file and extract the file to here. The file contains the directory structure as well as all of the files inside. So now I have a new directory called Troubleshooting Book Profile, and I'm ready to go back to Wireshark and try out the new profile. So toggling back over to Wireshark in the bottom right hand corner, I can now left mouse click and I can see that I have the Troubleshooting Book Profile available to me. I'll click on it. And now Wireshark moves me over into this new profile. When you work with the new Troubleshooting Book Profile, you'll notice some things. There's only one coloring rule that I added just the DNS errors coloring rule. There's also only one extra display filter that I added, the bad TCP display filter. But I did add a heading and I did separate out the default Wireshark filters below the bad TCP filter. You will see that there are a number of columns that have been created and are currently hidden. You can right mouse click on any column heading and then choose displayed columns to see the list of columns that I've created and hidden, such as the sequence number column, next sequence number, acknowledgement number, bytes in flight, 
round trip time, window size value, etc. You'll also notice that we have a number of filter expression buttons in this profile. And in fact, there are more, so I'll move this in and show you we have SIP errors, SMB errors, HTTP errors, DNS errors, etc. Much like what we did in this set of training videos in this Laura's Lab Kit. Profiles are created just from a series of text files. So if you wanted to edit something in a profile, it's very easy to do it right inside of the text file if you wish. For example, let's say in this troubleshooting book profile, you wanted to move the, let's say some of the filter expression buttons to another profile. You could either take the entire preferences file and move it to another profile, or you can go into that preferences file and just take the lines you're interested in. I'm going to open up the preferences file using WordPad. I'm going to search for the word express inside of this file because there's a heading right in front of the filter expression buttons. There it is. So here we can see that we now have the area that contains the filter expression buttons. So if I just wanted to take the delay filter expression buttons and move those to another uh, profile, all I have to do is select the lines that include the filter expression label and whether or not it's enabled and the expression itself and then copy that and just simply paste it into another profile. You may see warnings in some of the profiles like in the color filters file. You'll see that there's a warning in there saying do not edit this file. It was created by Wireshark. It's just a text file you can edit any of these files using a text editor. Continue adding to the troubleshooting book profile. The amount of time that you spend customizing Wireshark will pay off big when you get these trace files and you need to find the problem fast.